The following video was requested by one of my members, Swift O Scythe. Arkundalane, the Pirate King. Almost nothing is known of this individual's early life. Born in 1349, the exact details of his childhood is unclear. Some say he spent his youth in a drug den on a frontier world. Others say he was born in a brothel and worked as a bouncer there as he grew up. Nobody truly knows the circumstances from what he originated from, but one thing is clear. In his adulthood, his name, like Blackbeard and Charles Vane from stories of old, would strike fear into the unsuspecting hauler crew. Out in places far away from the nearest safe port or federal patrol, him and his crew would take what they wanted and kill who they wanted. The tradition of the title of Pirate Lord is exclusively transferred from the old leader to the new when the former is killed and the crew, or gang, pass on the title to their preferred choice of candidate. Sometimes, when a Pirate Lord's leadership is challenged by another pirate, a duel between the two is demanded in order to settle the dispute. The only rule that garners any kind of advantage for the Pirate Lord is his right to choose the weapons that will be used in this duel. When Delane was an upstart deckhand working for the Kumo crew, he first shoved his fist through the history books by challenging the leader of the Kumo crew, Lord Crab. Crab, using his right, chose a burnacle fist fight, presuming Delane was weak due to his albino colour. Not wanting to kill Delane, only beat him to a bloody pulp in order to teach him a lesson. Lord Crab's arrogance would be the death of him. As Ark and Delane tied the Lord by evading Crab's blows, Delane blinded him and then proceeded to bludge him to death with his bare hands. From this point onwards, the rest of the pirates would know Ark and Delane as Lord Delane, and his gamble ended him up as the leader of this outcast and dishevelled motley crew. In his early days as the leader of the Kumo crew, Ark proved his privateering capabilities to those who were unsure of him and he quickly garnered the respect and the trust of his shipmates. As rival pirate lords got in his path, one after another fell to his superior combat skills and perished. His final pirate challenge was pirate lord Horvath, who was killed by Archon in personal combat, the weapon being a razor whip, the personal weapon of Lord Horvath. At this point, murmurings from the crew that flew under a black flag started to address Lord Delane as the Pirate King. In 3301, Delane ordered the Kumo crew to begin expansion beyond the Pegasi sector, and at first these ventures were met with mixed results. When the Imperial Navy launched the crackdown on his pirate faction titled Operation Davy Jones, his Kumo crew was enthralled in combat with a well-trained and stocked combatant, and after taking heavy losses were drove out of the systems that Kumo crew regarded as their own. Lord Delane barely escaped this early blunder with his life in a commando raid on the Kumo headquarters in Jakiri. By summer 3302, the Kumo crew's fortunes were at an all-time low and it seemed plausible that the Kumo crew would fall apart at the seams. It seems though, using his garland cunning, Lord Delane would hold the crew together to steal another day. As both the Imperials and the Federation diverted their attention to the Pleiades Nebula and the harvesting of metal alloys, Archon Delane saw his chance once again to sail the stars under a black flag. During the early months of the Second Fargoid War, Delane's crew rebuilt much of their lost fortune and started once more to expand. Delane's crew rebuilt much of their lost fortune and started once more to expand as an organisation as the superpowers left systems unprotected due to the far great menace they faced. On March 4th, 3307, Archon Delane arrived at Patterson Enterprise in the Sirius system, demanding to be allowed to participate in the Galactic Summit as a delegate. Surprisingly, this demand was granted by Sirius Corporation and they granted him full diplomatic immunity and access to the conference under the condition that him and his crew would act appropriately as guests. In utter disgust, some of the other delegates walked out of the conference, much to the amusement of Lord Delane. 
As the conference pressed on, Archon Delane shocked those in attendance by demanding that his Kumo crew be recognised as a sovereign state, using the systems under his control to form the basis of this new nation. While his demand was dismissed as ludicrous by many of the delegates, some of those did not see this request as offensive as some of the others. On March 9, 3307, Lord Delane signed the Sirius Treaty, pledging more support to Aegis and strengthening cooperation between humanity on matters that pertain to the Fargoids. Due to the attack on the delegation by the NMLA, Archon never had his request formally granted as the conference was suspended. Plowing on with his intentions, Lord Delane announced the construction of five Orbis starports under his control, working with Kavanagh space frames to manufacture these stations. Pronouncing his new Kumo nation to the local press in the Pegasi sector, Arkham Delane continued to shift his organisation from one that was viewed as thieves and rogues to a legitimate spacefaring society. How exactly Arkham Delane funded the construction of these stations are not confirmed, but the presence of new Sirius facilities in the Kumo territories make it pretty obvious that Sirius is now financially supporting Lord Delane's ventures. Although it has never been recognised, the fact that Sirius may be backing the Kumo nation, then the other powers may just have to accept his sovereignty. Various concerns from advisers have been voiced in regards to the understaffing of the Orbis ports that were commissioned by Archon Delane. This apparently makes it easier for these facilities to be used as bases for any future pirate activity. Although I doubt that the Imperials or the Federation would allow piracy to spread in the region unchecked once more, I would imagine that the odd missing ship here and there, missing under mysterious circumstances, would probably slip by the respective police forces. It is unknown why exactly Arkham Delane was received so warmly by Sirius. Maybe they valued his skills, or maybe he had some piece of information that garnered him leverage. Nobody but these parties will probably ever find out. Thanks for the watch. I would like to thank the official members of the channel, David Gate, Asoka Ashlatanyo, Swift Old Scythe, Ministry of Magic Department of Mysteries, Patrick Green, the Wandering Reapers Gaming Community, Commander Omega 88, and Alex Simon. I would also like to thank Commander Buzz Doubledex for donating through coffee. If you would like to back the channel in this way and get some exclusive videos in return, then please follow the membership options below or on the homepage of the channel. If you would like to leave a one-off tip about the channel, then follow the coffee link below. Until next time, Commanders. Who are?